knocked out of the main board for cards like, you know, these new techs like Thunder King and Kaiku and like, a lot of these trap monsters. When I played at regionals this weekend, I actually sided the D-Prism, and D-Prism was like the MVP of the day, because they, they didn't expect it at all. Yeah, like, see, I'm thinking that basically, and this is kind of going to get into our trapless builds part, which I suppose we can go ahead and discuss now if we want. Um, a, a lot of decks um, are basically now running no traps as a counter to um, to Heavy Storm and MST is basically just run no traps. I, I know the basic reason for that is just to shut, like make their MSTs, their heavies dead, and you're still moving just as fast. Um, what do you guys think of trapless builds? Chris, you can start. I like them, but um, I've seen a lot of these trapless builds siding traps. And there are only very few decks that can't run traps, such as like Frog Monarch. So it's a little getting a little more obvious right now what they're trying to do with side decking traps. But I mean, it's still effective if you're not paying attention to it. Uh, Hunter, what about you? Like, what do you think of trapless builds? Do you think it's something that's going to last, or just sort of a temporary trend until, until the I meta maybe it, plays out? I think it really depends. Because the reason that uh, some agent decks can have trapless builds is because they already have enough control with their monsters. The the fact that uh, Christia can stop all the special summoning rather than before uh, oppression, but now we don't have that. Um, things like that. They it's just making it where you also have the ability to run more spells tr or spells and monsters and. Just go off, uh, and rather than have to sit and wait sometimes. Um, Mason, what about you? I think the trapless deck directly correlates to the earlier, uh, earlier thing we talked about a minute ago, to the, uh, the rain of the text, the new text. Like, the, the trapless build can use Maxi to get their advantage back, so they can have to complete control over their opponent, and rather than using traps, and, like, they're, they're utilizing double Tragedia Gore to control the field. They're, ba they're basically your traps of the deck. And they use Applied to Alley to search out everything they need because the deck's so fast and they search. That's what most decks are today. And, like, the, the smokescreen aspect where they don't use traps and then the opponent will see it and next round they'll sign off their, 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 sign off their stuff and you'll find your traps. That may... Sometimes you'll never know what your what your opponent's side deck's going to do. Sometimes it's going to be, be that way, but it might not. So it's always a 50 50 chance. I've been, um, I talked to Chris earlier, and Chris was more under the impression of kind of what I am that even though this like trapless trend is really big and it does work, I think that it'll sometimes, it like eventually could start becoming sort of expected where players maybe either A, stop main decking Heavy Storm and stop main decking MST, or like stop using them entirely, or they could actually, believe it or not, side deck those cards and not main deck them, just side deck them instead. And basically kind of as a preemptive, like kind of as a counter to these trapless builds. What do you think, Chris? Uh, I think yeah. that's... Or whoever think wants that's, to go. Okay, someone else can go. Well, I think that's I think that's a double-edged sword because, well, let's, let's say you're not playing against a trapless deck. Like, let's, let's just leave agents out of the equation. Let's just say you're playing against a card curry deck or a rogue deck to do the black wings, like you're gonna lose you're gonna lose game one because you don't have your MF and heavy. I mean Chris, what about you? Well I don't think you'll necessarily lose. I mean if you're gonna run us um heavy less and MST less build, you're gonna have to have counters in the first place because there's still destruction in these trapless builds. There's still the same kind of control that traps have. <coughs> so you're gonna have a count you're gonna need a counter to it no matter what in the form of a spell or a monster. Um well, I, I was actually sort of under the impression that if you if a deck say they didn't run Heavy Storm, say they didn't run MST, and they faced a deck like Black Wings that kind of runs a good bit of back row, um, really, I think that it kind of depends on if they're running traps or not. Like, say you ran no Heavy, you ran no MST, but you still ran traps, <laughs> then you're still like kind of vulnerable to Black Wings because Icarus can hit your back row, but if you didn't run heavy in MST and you didn't run trap cards, like you know, then what? Then I'd say that you you're pretty you're pretty well prepared for most or like for decks like Black Wings that you know. The monster swarm would be meaningless because their acres would not be focused on their back row. Then it would now be focused on your monsters. 
Which, I guess, yeah, that, that would be. That'd be a disadvantage. Um, and I will touch on that, the fact that uh, I saw, I think I saw that at Toronto, like, somebody playing uh, a TG deck that saw, had so many traps that they just didn't play um, heavier MST. They sided them, and, I mean, it did pretty good, but it was the fact that it already had the control. So, you just be, if you're going to do that, you have to have other things uh, that just take care of it because i think they also made like two uh two starlight um so are there any like tech cards that i know mason and hunter they just went to a regional um did you see any tech cards in the main decks that weren't kind of the expected kaiku thunder king valor things like that like anything just totally off the wall i didn't really see anything that that off the wall but one of the uh uh trail from uh, Team Deck Records, what well, he had in, the, in his side deck was really amazing. It was a very old card. I think it, I think it's called Possessed Dark Soul or something like that. Something, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. What it does is you, you summon it, and when you, you contribute it for a cost, so it really you can't, it can't be negated. You can email it all you want. It's still it's still going to happen. You contribute it. You take you, take, you permanently take control of all your opponents, level three or lower monsters until you leave it to it. So if you play agents, that'll really screw them over. Oh, oh, I just looked that up. Dang, that that's really, that's interesting. Like, that is ridiculous. I, I, I really actually like saw that. people doing that, too. They didn't cite it against me, but I saw them against other people. And uh. um, also, those, those um, techs, I'm going to say it now, they, they can work a lot. It's just, um, like, seeing uh, Kaiku and stuff, it's good. It's just... Unless you get to a de- point where there's, it's not good against the thing you're playing. I mean, I guess that's sort of the risk with any card, though. I mean, like, there's always, like, sort of cards you put in your deck thinking that you're going to face the meta, and you'll just face a deck where it's not useful. I mean, you just kind of pay the cost of what you what you put in the deck. But I, I think that there's enough, there's enough fairies to where... Or really just enough meta to where cards like Kaiku are still worth main decking, I'd say. I mean, we're going to get into rogue decks pretty soon, though, so... Yeah, that's what I was saying. Whenever we talk about that... You know, we can go ahead and do that now. Um, <clears throat> Like I said, you guys, Hunter and Mason were just at a regional, and so um, I know they said that they saw quite a bit of rogue decks. This was this was a um, how-many-person regional? There was about 190 people here, or there, in Lafayette. And what kind of rogue decks did you guys face? Uh, I, for uh, one, I faced Frog Monarchs. I faced um, I faced two Machina decks that played like Malefic Cyber End and Gear Town and all that stuff. Um, but other than that, like I played about four non-meta decks and I beat them, and I faced about, or if if that, and I faced about two meta decks. That I lost to, and one just. Eh. Mason, what about you? Ah, uh, I played through all eight rounds with five three. Me and Hunter both at five three, and like, I only only played one meta deck while I was there. All the rest was rogue, like white wings, uh, empty jar, all like all that kind of stuff. I never played a burn deck. There was there a was lot of so many burn decks there. Um. It, there was lights one. I mean, they may not be a road deck, but it's not really it's not really meta. You want to consider that that way. But but yeah. Um. So like, I basically kind of the two decks that we were already talking about earlier, Black Wings and Machina. Um. I guess we can start with Chris. What do you think of like people playing these decks? Do you think that they're playing them just kind of because oh I like Black Wings, or because maybe Black Wings and Machina actually have sort of a hidden good matchup against decks like Agents and Plants? Agents. Well, of course, I think it's a combination of both. I mean, Blackwings and Machina have been around for a while, so of course there's going to be someone that's extremely comfortable playing this deck. We already know their options. We already know their builds and stuff. And um, Blackwings and Machina, they do pretty much have a good matchup against stuff like all these agents. Their their boss monsters seem to work pretty well. So, I mean, it just seems like... Hunter, what about you? Um, They're... There is probably a bit of both in there because uh, Gear Frame is one of the biggest hurtful cards against uh, something like us because no matter what happens, it's going to 
it's going to get its uh, a second effect off. But it, de- it really depends because the Malefic Cyber End was really hurtful, 4,000 beater, but it takes it takes things, and I think the fact that um, the, it just shows that even if it's an autopilot deck, it can still win a lot. And Mason, what do you think of um, Black Wings and Machina? Black Wings, first of all, are really good. I, I think they're really good right now because people, like, since Heavy's around, they they usually use a lot of traps, but the, now they don't really have to be scared of the back row to stop them. So they can just go off and swarm and then take you down. So they they have a lot they have a lot of power behind them. They just tag those set when they're stacking a bluff, say go through heavy with whatever because they're, they're gonna they're gonna kind of swarm you. Uh, Machina, they've always been, they've always been good and consistent. They they, they, they you can take anima, anti-meta elements into them. Uh, especially if you play the gadget version, you always you always plus off, plus off of them. The fortress, fortress is great because you just you just get instantly. Yeah, instantly um, I was actually speaking of like sort of Machina taking anti meta. I actually found it kind of interesting that basically anti meta as a deck has fallen and basically it just seems like all of its um all of its components, like all the things you normally see in anti meta, have just kind of dispersed and been main decked into other stuff, but anti meta itself doesn't work. Do you think that there's maybe a reason why anti meta doesn't work? Whoever wants to start. I guess I will. Um I kind of know from experience that just general anti-meta doesn't work simply because there's no synergy. If this traditional anti-meta simply gets outsped or beater drops on the field, then you pretty much lose. I mean, that's what, that's pretty much why everything, all the components are being taken and putting on other decks that synergize and that have options. I mean, there's nothing really complicated about it. Hunter, what about you? Being the fact that I played anti-meta for a little while... Uh, and I decided to quit off it just because of the fact that um, it was it's really slow. And if you don't have the things that can stop that overpoweredness, if that's a word, then uh, you then it really just you can't really come back from that. Um, Mason, what about you? I believe as soon as Animata loses control, they've lost control, and they'll never be able to regain it. They're not fast enough. And- they're not fast enough, and they, they don't have enough outs to come back. Yeah, um, I, I basically, I pretty much agree with everyone. I think that Chris is especially right, because, like, really, it just seems like anti-meta loses, yes, because of its speed, but also just because there is no synergy there. There's no way to search those monsters. Like, you can't search any of the monsters. You can't recycle any of the monsters. And a lot of them have what I like to call sort of temporary field presence, like, Thunder King's good, but he'll oftentimes end up negating something. Like, by tributing himself, a lot of times, Doom Cal. And, like, just a lot of their monsters seem like they only stay on the field for so long, and there's no way to, like, actually put on a whole lot of pressure with that. And I think that after losing sort of their trump card, you know, oppression, it's basically reduced the deck down to just a mismatch of cards that are supposed to control the opponent but really don't because there's no guarantee of what you'll draw like if you open up with kaiku against plants where it's not really that useful then that's that and then but on the other hand you could open up with say uh breaker so you're like manning breaker and you open up with that against agents then that's not useful either and there's no real way to search anything there's no real way to like control like control your hand or your draws it's just kind of you deal with what you get, and yeah, that's why traditional antimeta with like doom cows and all that stuff has not become as big. But antimeta is getting more push to other things that can take that, like uh, TG stun. Just the fact that they have yeah, uh, they have their own engine. Damage. Yeah, and they're all floaters, and that's why they're good. Yeah, like like I said, I'm seeing a lot of antimeta stuff basically getting split up and just going into different decks, like. You know, Va- I mean, Valor and Max C, we already knew. But just cards like Kaiku and Thunder King are ending up in decks that aren't really anti-meta. Well, TG Stun sort of is. But um, they're ending up in there instead of anti-meta itself. And I think it's because those decks have more synergy. And those decks have their own engines they're working off of. Um, So for our next point, I, I, don't, I guess this isn't really listed in the agenda, but 
do you think that like some of these that, like trapless bills and medicals you think any of this is going to change when rescue rabbit comes out um, I believe that there will people just start maining uh, bottomless. Mason can tell you more about that. Oh because, God! <laughs> because Mace, uh, because uh, bottomless really just takes care of rescue rabbit stuff. And other than that, I really can't say much will be different. Other than maybe uh, Penguin Soldier and Liberty at last, just to put back exceeds because exceeds uh, just kind of devastating. At some point. Yeah, Chris was telling me one of the weaknesses he sort of saw in most every Exceed is that very few of them actually have proactive effects, only Levier, and the rest of them are pretty much prone to Compulse and stuff like that because Utopia isn't offensive. He just negates attacks, and, like, Roach negates summons, but none of them do anything on summon. It's not like he unlay or anything like that. I mean, Chris, maybe you can tell us more about what you think. Uh, yeah, it's you pretty much covered it. They're just passive. I mean, until they're giving you problems. I mean, Levy, of course, is the, the exception. But until they give you problems, most of the time you can just leave them there until you just want to compulse it and then do something. Because, I mean, they're just slow right now. But with um, the seeds that are coming out next set, some of them do have proactive effects. We've already had a conversation about this. Thunder and Dragon, for one. The oh, other. yeah, that's going to be a thing. Um, Mason, what do you think about, like, when Rescue Rabbit comes out, do you think that a lot of the trap lineups will start running, like, stuff like Bottomless? I, I do believe so. Like, yesterday I decided to go with a more controlled trap version, and then, then I, I, didn't run, I didn't run the trapless version yesterday, because I thought there would be rogue decks, and there were, which was great, was what I did. So I made, I made Warning, which was great, by the way. I mean, it's a, I mean... It's a very susceptible card to be destroyed, but it's real. It's really good. I also made two copies of Bottomless, which was the MVP of the day. I think, I think Bottomless is gonna make a, a great comeback, soon, especially for the downfall of Rescue Rabbit. Bottomless is gonna be a really key card. Also, um, Dark World. We've touched on this before, but I guess we'll just jump right back to it again. Um, when Dark World comes out, do you think that um? I mean, I think that when Dark World comes out, tra the Trapless builds will only have even more of an advantage. But um, what do you guys think? Whoever wants to start. I think they're going to get a little more hurt by uh, Dark Worlds because the only way to get rid of Graffa is to bottom, let's say, really, or Crow. And other than... Because it'll just come back. And other than that, I mean, I think there will just be those uh, techs that they have which just have to get make, make them go to get around Dark Worlds and stuff. I mean, like, I think that... You like you said, DD Crow is an answer, and DD Crow could find itself in a lot of main decks. But even so, like even without traps, cards like Max C can really sort of be a bit of a pain for Dark World in that you're drawing. Um, I, although I, I do think that traps will they they, they they could make another appearance, like because you do have to you do want to have Bottomless, and when Dark World and Rabbit are both out, Bottomless will probably become the MVP like Ma MVP like Mason said. Um, Chris actually, um, says, like I said, Magic Drain. Great card against Dark World. What it's do you think? It's amazing. Uh, my ahead. opinion, Magic Drain is absolutely beautiful against Dark World, simply because they need their spells to work, and either they get their spells negated, and then have to play the one that, the other one that they have in hand, or they ditch two for one Dark World effect, making it a minus one. They're pretty much, they're going to constantly lose hand. Yeah, it's just going to pull away their stamina even faster than it already kind of goes, because I don't think that Dark World has a lot of stamina. But, um, Mason, what are your thoughts? I think, well, first off, let me say something about Blake's new deck he's trying to make. Like, it's going to hurt. He's preparing for the Dark World threat as long as, like, and, and, like, it hurts agents, plants, and every other meta deck out there. He's about, to, he's, just, he's starting to run Macro Monarchs again, like he, like he did in the past. And his his tech is going to be legendary jujitsu master. Can we talk about it? But that's, that's another thing. Like ma like macro and and deep major just completely shut down every play that Dark World has. Not to mention not to mention plants and agents themselves. But Dark World is really going to suffer from it because they really have no outs. Uh, also, I want to touch on the fact 
you say Max C hurts Dark Worlds. In reality, there it's not going to hurt them as much as you think because they're really only going to be special summoning like once per turn most of the time, and you're just going to get that one of on Max C. I don't think it's going to really be as big of a deal, but um, but I feel I, like in that sense, then then isn't that sort of one of Dark World's weaknesses? If it can only special summon once, maybe twice per turn, then it they can, can special summon a lot. They just they just won't because they know that uh, all the stuff can be hurt. Uh, Chris, what are your thoughts on Max? I feel Dark like. World? I feel Dark World have to either go big or pretty much go home. Get your opponent where in a position where they can't counter and drop as many monsters as they can and swing. But again, like Max C is going to be, I think it's going to be pretty good against them because for Dark World to really, really be effective, you have to swarm. And I think the the Max C will be making your opponent draw so many cards that like the Dark World dealings won't even be disruptive. And at first I thought that that was sort of a little bit of a bonus to Dark World and that it could disrupt your opponent. But when they have Max C and they're drawing from Max C and then they're drawing and discarding from Dark World Dealings, it just gives them more things to discard. And you're really, like, at that point, you're just speeding up your opponent and setting up a lot of times. Like, I mean, that's not always true, player. but go ahead, Mason. Like, especially if you're playing a plant player and they start doing that, you're just giving, you're just giving them pluses all over the place. Yeah, you're just you're, you're setting up, and even Chris, who's playing the sort of obscure zombies, can attest to this. Oh yes, um, another card I actually wanted to touch on for like Psychic against Dark World. It's a complete trash card, except it's absolutely hilarious against Dark World. It's the card regenerating mummy. If it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you simply add it back to your hand. And if Dark Worlds are playing their Dark World dealings and that kind of stuff, you pitch that same exact card and you just gain advantage off of it. Yeah, it's pretty good it's stuff. A- oh, and I, I, I was thinking, um, you know, if Dark World, say Black Wings, like Mason was saying, Black Wings aren't a bad deck. Say they came back into popularity and Dark World appeared too, do you think that at that point Consecrated Light would be a viable side deck card? Thoughts? It would be a viable side deck card, but uh, I think there are people, people are going to be playing a few lights. So they can play BLS because just because it's there, uh, it's really a defining card of this format. It seems if you're not playing it, it's kind of it's kind of hurtful. But uh, it's not it's not bad if you're not playing it, but it's really good if you are. So people are going to be playing those lights. So I think it, it, those are going to be able to hurt consecrated. It surprises me that um, I haven't seen like the Dark World builds that I see on Dueling Network. I just never see BLS, and it surprises me because don't they run Fabled Raven? I mean, usually yes. like three of them. I just they is it should, a, they should be running about two Ravens if there's people are smart, but that is. The problem. All right, so are you like seeing any reasons why BLS isn't in more Dark World decks? Like, does anyone know? That's just my personal question. I believe it isn't because people just aren't. Either there's not enough room, or, or literally people just aren't smart enough to do it i don't think it really takes a lot of smarts to take a bls in anything like any deck these days can put a bls in it with well i don't see why they're not i really do maybe that's just my just i'm just haven't seen any i think dark worlds don't want to play bls because sometimes it can get in the way they they have to they have to go big or go home like chris said and if they don't get that play because the bls play will hinder some of their other plays that like say they have they have gra- only like the only dark they have is, is, is graph in the graveyard because they've already removed all their things with their field stuff, and they need graph, but they're going to they're, they're having issues between that and BLS. I mean, that, it, it, it can be a hindrance sometimes. I see where you're going with that. I see. I also think that because yeah, like they have to discard and use like dark world dealings. Sometimes the BLS will just be a thorn in the, in the hand that they can't really use, and it's just sort of there. I mean, I would rather, I don't know, I mean, I think Chris, Chris made a suggestion that there should be Dark World builds based on synchroing. Um, Chris, maybe you can explain a little more. Um, I can't really, it was simply an idea, because we've seen these fabled cards, 
However, I mean, Babel's kind of had the same problem with Dark Worlds. They have low stamina. They depend too much on themselves. They de- depend too much on their little card effects going off and comboing in- into nothing, pretty much. I mean, it, something, it'll pretty much just depend on that TCG card um, being some kind of broken tuner for them. Um, speaking of Fabled, Mason, um, didn't you say you saw like a Fabled deck or two at the regional? Blake, actually, I, I didn't play any Fabled, but Blake did. And Blake, he he came close to beating them, but that dude, he had it down pat. Like, he, he had it to swear it was tech out for the team. Like, were there any yeah. specifics that you knew about? Not specifically. I just remember him, uh, I remember just walking up and seeing, like, mained uh, Mind Crush. Only, only reason I saw that was because it was super German, and I was just like, you know, he's probably not a bad player. He just wanted to play Fabled or something. Yeah, speaking of Fabled, did, does anybody remember about six, maybe eight, nine months ago, when Fabled was supposed to be hyped up to be the big thing in the future? Whatever happened, like, any, any thoughts, Chris, you want to start? Um, I think it, people are have gonna have the same problems like that they're gonna have with Dark World. Um, they're finding out it's all hype, pretty much, and that lack of stamina. So everyone builds it and kind of get they lose with it, so they drop it. Just kind of simple as that. The road to Nurturia, basically, it's like it's kind of like Nurturia. Like they were hyped up the whole time. Yeah, I, I think like I've played the the Fable decks I play. It just seems like. I always get scared at first when I see them summoning all these monsters and, like, discarding. And then I realize, okay, wait. They've got, like, five monsters in field, so I'm afraid they're going to just go crazy. And then they end up sinking, like, four of those monsters into one synchro. And it's like, wait, that's it? I mean, you know... The, it, re- the reason for that is because they most of the things they have are really low stars. And they have to use the... They have to use a lot of monsters to go into, like to go into the synchros. Yeah, and I think that that's just a weakness because, like, when there's, like, five monsters in the field, you should be doing a little more than going into, like, a level six synchro and drawing, like, two cards. I mean... And hope that it doesn't get Valored. Yeah, because once that thing gets Valored or anything, it's like, ugh. Like, at the end of their combo, like, like they'll, they'll combo out and then they'll still have, they'll still have left-hand advantage. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you would think, like, I mean, I know the deck's supposed to be based on discarding, so you wouldn't expect it to just be keeping a lot of hand. But it's just that they're, like, doing all these crazy combos, and by the time they're done with it, it, I don't, I don't see any, like, real, real benefit. I mean, I don't know, that's just, I always thought Fable was gonna be that crazy new thing, but it, it's really not looking like it's living up to it. I think we're gonna find the same problems with Rescue Rabbit decks. Yeah, I see a so many holes in Rescue Rabbit. I really do. It's like a hundred dollar card, but like half the people, like all the good people, are not gonna be interested in it. I mean, it's, it's gonna. There's so many holes in it that I don't see. It, I don't see it being consistent enough to run an competitive play. I'm thinking the Rescue Rabbit decks. Like I was talking to Chris yesterday about it, and it just seems like okay. Say you're running a Rescue Rabbit deck. I don't know exactly how the builds are made, Hunter. I know you probably do know a little more. Um, but. It's some- but, like, say there was a Rescue Rabbit deck. They ran their level 3s, their level 2s, their level 4s. Like, you know, 2 for Gachi Gachi, 4 for... You know, you guys know how that works. Well, what Yeah, happens, they're already going to be running their um, the tour guide for the 3. Like, so what happens when you draw these normal monsters? Like, what does the deck do? Essentially, uh, you're... I only see them running, like, 3 level 2s uh, just to be able to go Gachi. But uh, quite a bit of level 4s... And they're going to be using the level 4s that are 1,900, 2,000. So even if they can't um, use them, they'll just uh, start punching with them. But, ag- just- but against Asians, that means, like, nothing. I mean... As soon as they got Tragodia with, like, five cards in hand or Hyperion has a fill, it's over for them. Like, yeah. They can't not do anything over that. I mean, summoning a 1,900 and beating would be good a few formats ago. But at this point, it's like... If you're trying to summon and beat against Agents, well... Or even That's plants. Not, not to mention, Gachi Gachi has 2200 defense when he's got both his materials on him. Cards like Spirit Reaper now sometimes main decked or even side decked, and I just don't see a way for you to really get past those with just yeah. a beater. I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to like sit here and just kind of flame on Rabbit, but 
I think it, it, it like Fable, like Dragoonity, like Dark World, is just another bandwagon hype card that's just not really going to live up to it. Truthfully, I think I'm going to touch on Dragoonity. I I played the deck for a long time, and I kind of want to go back to it just for a lot, just for fun, a little bit. It's not a bad deck. It just gets overpowered. I think it's going to be a little bit better this format because Stardust is such a rapist. I mean, it's but still, it's got that same inherent flaw of gotta have that field spell. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Mason, what were you saying? That's that's the exact reason why Great Keepers is not seeing as many plays they have. But they have they're I'm not gonna lie, GK's are a powerhouse because just simply because of the fact is they can they can maintain field control with Spot and they can use little tribute, but they, the key to their success is Necro Valley, and when Necro Valley is not not present, they kind of lose. Yeah, and when Thunder King's shutting down Recruiter and Commandant, it's like, uh And my philosophy, I mean, I know this can be argued, but my philosophy is that I just don't think that a deck can truly be top tier if it relies on a field spell, no matter what the deck is. I mean, it can be good, it can be high now, tier, but I just don't think that a top tier deck can really survive using a field spell. That's true now. Maybe maybe uh, a few formats ago when it was just one heavy, one MST, that would have been fine. But there's so much destruction with agents and the heavy triple MST. And some people are even citing dust just for uh, stun decks. And they'll be like, oh, well, here's something that relies on a field spell. I'm citing dust just to hurt it. And it really does. And that's just another problem with uh, with that... Now, those decks that rely on field spells for, like, one turn, and then they're okay, or they just use them for one turn, like I think Dark Worlds can, uh, they'll be fine to a point. But that just, that sort of seems to play into Dark Worlds' weakness. Every Dark World deck I play, like, they'll use their field spell, use its effect, and then, like, activate another field spell, use its effect. But at that point, it's just, it's still making this, those same zeros, that they're not really plusing. And... Let me touch on Dusty, I'm not Dusty, but Dusty, for a second. Dustinado is a very underplayed card because what people, what people will do, they'll play, they'll play their, they'll play the field spell, they'll get Dustinado, and a real good player knows Dustinado's second effect. Like, a Dustinado's field spell, like, they'll use Dustinado's uh, second effect during the end phase to set their MST. I mean, like, either way it goes, you're screwed because they just set another field, they just set another field destruction. Yeah, that's, Dust Tornado, do you think it's just really uh, underrated and maybe is worth playing or siding? Because, let's well, say you know what your opponent has in their hand, but you don't want to set your mind crush yet. Because I mean, you might get MFT'd, and you're like, well, let, me, let, me, let me go off on on, on that. Uh, mind crush. Let's let's say you want to wait for him to play Pyro out, and you have mind crush in hand. And you don't want it to get MFT'd right away. They, they play MST, they hit the, they hit the Dust Tornado. You chain the Dust Tornado, and you set your mind crush. Now you, don't, now you know you don't have MFT. But then they'll play the Pi Duality, and then they'll get their shit. Then you change, then you uh, do your Minecraft uh, during your draw phase. It, 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 it's a really good card. Yeah, Mine um, I'll go ahead. Minecraft is just a card that I want to talk about in its own discussion later. <clears throat> because there was somebody that really did some pro moves on me uh, that I lost to last round. He really did some pro moves with me with Minecraft. Go ahead and explain. I mean, we're in no time. Um... Essentially, what happened is, uh, it was game three, and I just drew, um, it was game three, I had a light and dark grave, I just drew BLS, and, uh, it was really about even, we couldn't, neither of us could attack, and I just wanted to wait a turn, because, uh, he just was sitting there, next turn, he sets a card, says go, I draw, on the standby face, he calls BLS out of nowhere, he, he didn't know, he literally said to himself, I probably am going to be wrong, but stay in my face, BLS, and I had to pitch it. Do you think it's... It's, it's pro moves like that, that the, uh, just calling the only card that will fuck you up really works against. That's yeah, true. Um, so, that, yeah, I, I do agree with that, because it seems like BLS is that card that, even though there's only one copy of it in every deck, it's kind of like heavy in that for one copy, it gets drawn so much. And I think that it's worth mind crushing BLS. Even if you get it wrong, just because you know that that's the only card that will, like, fuck up your strategy. I mean, I know Chris sort of talks about it a lot. Like, how he can... does he Chris plays zombies. He can handle agents really well. It's just, like, 
his real only real problems like the BLS and the Hyperion. So once he gets a full field of pretty much what he needs, mind crushing BLS or mind crushing Hyperion could be worth it even if he hits it wrong because at that point he'll know that there's nothing else to worry about anyways. And it's not bad. It's it's really funny whenever you just uh, whenever it's the only card in your hand, you set it. So you're not really taking a minus as much of a minus whenever you just call it and you don't have to pitch anything. I actually wanted to touch on something. Um, Hunter, you're seen, you so far you seem to be a Dark World fan. Um, Dark World play Mind Crush. They they play it really well. Dark World play Mind Crush all the time. They play it really well because even if you do call it wrong, you can actually get a zero off of it at the very least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're also really, they're really resilient to Mind Crush. Like a main deck Mind Crush against Dark World is a pretty bad idea. I mean, it's not like you would know, but if you Mind Crush Dark World player, I mean, I guess you wouldn't call the Dark World monster anyways. You'd you'd probably want to call something that would be able to get off. The Dark World play. I like, would say Dark they, World dealing. Yeah, if they duality and dealings, really, you're not going to see dealings as much just because Dark Worlds are going to be hyped. Mm -hmm. And oh, I don't want to get their Dark World effects off too, because having the second, getting off the second effect of a Dark World is even more devastating than people know. Oh, you guys. Okay, me and Chris were talking. What do you guys think of the Dark World mirror match? I just had to get this topic on. Like Mason, you can start. Is going to be a very, very conservative match because because Dark Worlds are going to be running their their only discard outlet is basically either going to be the Field Spell or Raven at that point because if they if they are main decking the the Dark World dealings in the in first turn whoever plays it first is probably going to lose so let's, let's just like if they disc if they discard like Grappa from the hand like the Dark World dealings they're going to steal their monsters or someone else they're going to lose. So they're gonna have to slide them out. And their only discard outlets are gonna be like are gonna be themselves. Uh, Chris, what about you? Dark World Mirror Match thoughts? I think there were gonna, that's gonna be why you're not gonna really see a whole lot of them at bigger events because simply because the mirror match is too hard to predict and it's almost auto lose for whoever whoever goes first because okay. you go ahead because you can't exactly just say go to your opponent and <clears throat> risk them not running Dark World. Because, I mean, that's just a good way to get yourself killed in Yu-Gi-Oh. And Hunter, what about you? Now, I've been trolled a lot about this card, but I think it's going to be used instead of dealings. I see sh Drag Down to the Grave. What it does is you you and your opponent look at each other's hand, and you choose what to discard out of the other person's hand, and then you draw. And it counts as uh, discarding for an effect instead of a cost. So... Uh, really, you, you can see what they've got in hand, so Mind Crush is going to go along with that. Uh, B, you're you're probably going to make it where they can they only have two or three choices of Dark Worlds that they want to pick, and they don't want to have to pick any of them. And it doesn't count as your opponent discarding it, but still, it's kind of devastating. I mean, I agree with that, but you also have to remember that um, Snow can't search Drag Down to the Grave. That's true. Also, need to. I also need to touch on this. Um, drag down to the grave. Is it discard three, then draw one? No, it's not discard three. It's it's uh, uh, drag down to the grave. It says you and your opponent look at each other's hands, select one card from each other's hands, and discard them to the graveyard, and then each draw one card. There may be a timing issue with that card then. There may be a timing issue, but I've uh, looked at it, and it is a call. It is an effect, but I'll have to talk to some higher up judges because I, I don't really know. It'd be a timing I mean, too because if you if it was that if it was done that way you have to draw a card at the end then the that would mean that the monster's effect would try to go off in the middle of the resolution of of, of drag down to the grave so then it wouldn't be valid yeah it all depends there on if dark the, the dark world effects are mandatory or optional dark worlds cannot miss their timing okay if, if that's the case yeah it's been ruled dark worlds cannot miss their timing really okay because, because like, i know that's an official ruling from konami yeah, because I've seen it played over in Japan, and I was and I was like, if people are trolling me about it, I don't see why they're playing it over there. And uh, so, if Dark Worlds can't miss their timing, then I think it's it's going to be the, uh, the it's going to be used instead of dealings. Um, you know, I thought sort of about like in a Dark World mirror match, a card like Null and Void. I don't know exactly how well it would work, but does anyone know what that does? It's a, I don't remember. 
It's a trap. It's just a normal trap. You activate it when an effect of drawing cards is activated. Both players see the cards drawn by the effect and discard them all to the graveyard. I don't know exactly how well that'll work, but it seems like something that's kind of worth citing um, in a Dark World mirror. I mean, you'll set off their effects, though, like your opponent's effects, though, too, so it just seems like there's not really a way to get around that Dark World mirror match. Like, yeah, it is kind of it is kind of hurtful. I'll agree. Like, I just don't see the Dark World Mirror being any easy easy out. Not even a smart player can really do a whole lot. That's that's what it's going to come down to. Is essentially who is the smarter player? Um, essentially, and I think mind, crush, mind crushing just the spells and traps. And Dark World Lightning, I think, is going to be thrown in a little bit at that point. I, I hate to kind of undermine what you're saying, but I really don't think there's any smarts involved. In a Dark World Mirror, it's... A smart player can be conservative, but they're not gonna. nothing's going to happen. Like, the best that I can say is that it's just going to be a lot of luck. I mean, that might just be me, like, throwing my opinion out there kind of strong, but... I mean, you might be Ma true on that, but... I don't Mason, know. Chris... I have to wait. I, I agree with Paul. I mean, Dark World Mirrors depend so much. You only know what you have in hand, and... What your opponent has in hand is pure luck. Therefore, you can't really play a card knowing that your opponent doesn't have something in hand. Yeah, so, and, and like game one, game one's going to be risky. In game one, you could win off entirely off of you're playing Dark World. You don't know they're playing Dark World. Like you could easily lose because of that, or easily win. But um, in game two and three, it very little amount of smarts will really help you. Like it's just. Who has the bigger like, monster first? Almost. I mean, it's still just it's luck. Like it's a weird mirror match, and I think that that's the reason why Dark World just won't be able to stick like st stick with other decks because that mirror match is just way too off the wall, way too random. It's like Dark World's worst worst matchup is itself. Yeah, and I mean that's really bad because agents versus agents is crazy but i mean it's still a lot of skill base and it's still compelling in comparison to the dark world mirror match. yeah it's the dark world mirror is just it's ridiculous i don't i just don't know what to say about it i really do, yeah it's difficult to get on that subject because we don't really it, it, with the new cards we don't really know how that's going to work out but i'm i'm just, it, back then back whenever uh dark world was good before it's still it was uh really crazy to have mirror matches i mean that that that's Just gonna to be interesting least. i'm also thinking that rescue rabbit mirror matches are probably gonna be really really um like lean towards the person who goes first because if you go first get your rescue rabbit off then your opponent's always one step behind you and at that point you like it's almost like anti-meta mirrors you know i mean what do you guys think of the rescue rabbit mirror I agree with you, just at all. Chris? I think they're going to be pretty boring. I mean, if all they're doing is, is eating into passive things, about all you can really do is just one person to seed per turn, and it's going to go back and forth until someone either top decks someone or nukes someone else's field or and runs the, over their own protection. And I'm thinking, like, it wouldn't be that bad if, Ex if, like, if Xyz had levels instead of ranks. I would just kind of be, like, the first person that could go into that roach or something. I mean, Roach can only sell level 5 or higher, I guess, but along those lines. Like, if they both synchro it, I'd say the first person who can just go into a Roach can shut the other player down. But, Mason, what do you think? Now, I'm going to agree with Chris on this. I mean, they're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it turns into a top deck looks at war. I mean, that's how, that's how it's going to go down. And yeah. Tour God is going to play a really big part in that because Tour God is going to help them uh, with the fact that they have t now two monsters when your opponent has one. The only and way, like, to, well, as soon as you, re you use Rescue Rabbit, I think the only way to recycle it is, is Tour God. Yeah. <laughs> I think that it won't even, in a mirror match, it won't be worth going for Levier every time. I would, if it were me, I would go into Leviathan. Not, I mean, I know I'm missing out on the play, but I'd be powering over everything they can summon. So if you go first, I'm going to alive them too. Because yeah, it's gonna it's gonna overpower anything that rescue rabbit tries to throw out most likely. Yeah, because you know if you go into Leviathan, you're going first, and you have Leviathan now. He's at 25. Nothing the other rabbit player can do will help except go into their own Leviathan, 
at that point it's your turn again, so you can still do whatever you want. I mean, it, yeah, it, there. I mean, there is utopia to just hold off, but it's only twenty five, and you can make Levi Leviathan go up to three k. Yeah. So another just kind of boring mirror match. I don't see any of those new decks being as fat, like as competitive in the mirror match as agents and plant synchro are now. But um. So, anything else anyone wants to touch on before we get done? I think that's it for me. Hunter? I'm fine. Mason? I'm good with it. All right, so um, I guess we're done for this podcast, you guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't seen the other one, be sure you watch it. We're planning to do this every week, so tune in next week. Leave a comment with what you thought. Um, give us suggestions for what we should do next time. We'll try to have more people. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching, and... um. I guess that's it. I'll see you guys later.